persons are wondering whether we will have it done in time for the celebration of Jamaica 60. Unfortunately, the procedures set out in the Constitution will not permit that timing to be met. This was the word from Minister of Constitutional Affairs Marlene Malahu Fort during a post-cabinet press briefing on Wednesday. Minister Malahu Fort says that while Barbados was able to accomplish such a change in short order, there are differences between the two countries. They have different constitutional provisions and unlike a Jamaica, they did not require a vote from the people to make that important change in their constitution. She took the time to explain the three types of provisions within the constitution of Jamaica. These are ordinary provisions, the ordinarily entrenched provisions, and finally, the one that will be needed to change to accommodate the move to a republic, the deeply entrenched provisions. Section 49 tells you what has to be done in order to make an amendment to these provisions and also which provisions fall in this category. And among them are the provisions relating to Parliament at section 34, which provides that the Parliament of Jamaica consists of Her Majesty the Queen, the Senate and the House. There is also section 35, which speaks to the Senate, comprising eight senators appointed on the recommendation of the Prime Minister, 13 government senators appointed on the recommendation of the Prime Minister, and eight on the recommendation of the Leader of the Opposition, and 39 qualification to serve in the Parliament of Jamaica. Commonwealth citizen over the age of 21 years, ordinarily resident in Jamaica in the preceding 12 months. You would know that this one is of concern to Jamaicans in the diaspora who hold citizenship outside of the Commonwealth. And then there is also section 68.1, which speaks to the executive powers being vested in Her Majesty. Minister Malahu Ford further explained the steps in moving a bill to be passed. The deeply entrenched provisions, ladies and gentlemen, require a vote of two-thirds members of both houses, and it also requires a vote by members who are qualified to vote in general elections. That's what we call the referendum. But before a bill which seeks to amend the ordinarily or deeply entrenched provisions can go through. There is a requirement of a three month period between the date when the bill is tabled on the House and the commencement of debate. So here we are now in April and we're in the middle, we have just commenced the sectoral presentation. Even if the bill were to be tabled, you'd have May, June, July before any debate could commence.